Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz. Sponsored by Georgia Power. And Go Beyond Profit. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Governor-elect Brian Kemp's transition to the state's top office is underway. Some of his team's early planning involves setting priorities for the business community. In an exclusive interview with Atlanta Business Chronicle, Kim says he's been driven by his frustration with government. He wants to cut regulations on health care. Kemp says he would like to increase the rural hospital tax credit from $60 million a year to as much as $100 million. Meanwhile, the film industry has threatened to pull out of Georgia if the state enacts a so-called religious freedom law. Kemp says his position is the same as it was during the campaign. He says he will support a bill in Georgia that matches the federal statute. Meanwhile, current Governor Nathan Deal announced more economic development wins last week. A Korean, South Korean battery maker plans to build a manufacturing plant in Jackson County. SK Innovation makes lithium-ion batteries for hybrid electric vehicles. It'll invest more than a billion dollars in the facility and could generate 2,000 jobs. And the online retailer Wayfair will open a new facility in Savannah. It'll create about a thousand jobs there. Wayfair already has a warehouse and distribution center in McDonough. If you're taking a Delta Airlines flight out of the country, you'll be able to use facial recognition to check in and board your flight. Delta officially launched its first biometric terminal in the country at its hometown hub at Hartsfield Jackson Airport at Terminal F. Based on initial testing, Delta says the scanners will save about two seconds for each passenger boarding or as much as nine minutes when boarding a wide body airplane. A $45 million mixed use development is on the drawing board for Suwannee. Atlanta developer Polak Shores wants to build nearly 300 apartments and shops in Suwannee's town center, giving the North Atlanta suburb more of a downtown feel. The Westside Future Fund has purchased about 200 apartments in Vine City. It acquired the Villas at the Dome apartment community. Officials say they bought the complex to preserve affordable housing in that area. The property is about a mile from the Gulch, which is poised for a $5 billion overhaul. It's also close to the Atlanta Beltline. The Westside Future Fund says it was just a matter of time before a commercial developer bought the property. An abandoned school in southeast Atlanta is getting television ready. The former Milton Avenue Elementary School will become home to Crazy Legs Productions. That's the company behind nonfiction television shows like Discovery's Swamp Murders. Crazy Legs bought the property in Chosewood Park for $425,000. The Buckhead Community Improvement District is looking to fix a notorious bottleneck, the triangular intersection of Roswell, Piedmont, and Habersham Roads. The CID is committing $300,000 to study the problem and come up with proposed solutions. At a recent public meeting, residents and business owners said they want improved mobility for cars, bikes, transit, and pedestrians. An Atlanta neighborhood surveillance startup that helps report crime to police has just come into some money. Flock Safety has raised $10 million from a group of investors. Now this comes on the heels of another $10 million raise last quarter. The company specializes in solar-powered license plate reading cameras that record activity that can then be sent to the authorities. Flock Safety is using the recent funding to grow, officials say. They're hiring engineers, sales reps, and managers. Federal authorities have indicted two men in connection with the ransomware attack against the city of Atlanta's computers earlier this year. The U.S. Justice Department says two Iranian men lodged their hack from the Middle East. Authorities have been investigating the international computer hacking scheme for about three years. There have been 200 victims, officials say, ranging from hospitals to governments. The city of Atlanta spent about $3 million on its initial response to the breach, but recovery costs could be as much as $17 million. The Savannah Harbor Deepening Project is attracting more federal funds. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has earmarked $52 million in this year's budget to keep the project on track. Coupled with the $49 million in President Donald Trump's original spending plan, the Corps' funding brings the federal government's commitment to $101 million. That's enough to keep the project on schedule to be finished in 2021. The state of Georgia has already contributed about $290 million toward deepening the harbor so that it can accommodate larger ships and more cargo.